This week on a special episode of The Big Show, we are talking Black Christmas classics today. And, you know, I'm very, as you can see in my space, this is, this is one of my favorite shows, Black Christmas classics. Plus, we will review the magnificent night of Black excellence at this year's celebration of Black cinema. T.T. Stern Enzi, who you see on the screen, will join us to give us a recap of the night's festivities. Plus, this week in theaters, West Side Story returns 60 years later. We will discuss a movie that I was watching up until we watched, until we started the show. I was watching kind of like the original, the, 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 the new version, trying to, to do a comparison. But we'll talk about all that stuff on uh, this latest episode of Keeping It Real with Film Gordon. Let's go. All right. And welcome to the latest episode. The Big Show, Keeping It Real with Film Gordon. I am Tim Gordon. As you can see, man, I'm excited. This is going to be a good show today. First of all, I got my friend, T.T. Stern Enzi, joining us today, straight out of Cincinnati, by virtue of Philly and some other spots in between, but that's another story. Charles Kirkland Jr. is here, who was not hanging with us this weekend, but I know he wished he was. When, once he hears what we have to say, he wish he was there, bro. <laughs> Uh, but Charles is in Vegas, man. So he, we'll talk about that stuff. West Side Story is in theaters. We got a bunch of movies. I'm just, you know, all of our eyes are slits right now, man, because we all been watching movies, traveling, doing stuff. It's the, it's the most wonderful time of the year. It's holiday season. So with that being said, uh, Charles Kirkland, how you doing, brother? All I can say is I feel like Aaron Burr. I wish I was in the room where it happened. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty, pretty much, sir. Pretty much. And, and we're going to discuss where the room would happen. But before we get there, you were in Vegas this weekend, man. I know as a rule, they say what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Uh, you know, all I know is you went because the, the, the Washington football team was playing the Las Vegas Raiders. You uh, went along with a host of other fans of the football team and uh, they, they won. So uh, congratulations. The Vegas takeover was successful. Yes, we invaded. We, we triumphed over the Raiders. And I, I had a great time. My wife and I, were, we were actually there to celebrate her birthday. But that just happened to be something I slid in on the side there that she could join me with. And, and we had a great time. I, I still, still wish I was in the room where it happened. So before we get to where the room where it happens, TT, let me just tell you, that Charles and I both were on the same flight. <laughs> and then I, which was really cool, we kind of got to a, a, a midway uh, point and he went his way, I went mine, but it was always funny watching Charles on the plane like. <laughs> <laughs> so we had a lot of fun, man. That was good. And, and it was strictly unplanned. We didn't know until we showed up and I was like, oh, yeah, I know you. Um, but, but let's talk about Los Angeles, man. Um, let's talk we're not going to talk about Doug. We're not going to talk about Doug dynasty. No, no, we're not going to talk about the guy. <laughs> that, that's, that, that's not a, that's not a, a podcast discussion. That's offline, but oh, okay. let's, talk about, let's talk about Monday night's event. Now, of course we had Sean Edwards on our show last week, uh, for the entire show who kind of gave us a preview and he kind of scratched the surface. He told us there would be some people in the room and, you know, this event was happening. It was the fourth time. And he talked about the history and all of that. But none of that prepares you when you walk into the Fairmont Century Plaza, uh, you know, which is which has been remodeled from what I understand. Um, it's been a hotel that's been a favorite of, of many celebrities. Uh, I heard, you know, they told us that President Ronald Reagan, it was his favorite hotel. And uh, TT, when we got there, I could see why. It, it was the perfect venue but what we had to do on Monday night, and even before they opened the doors and people were just milling around, uh, you see you see some people who were VIPs who they were all on the red carpet. And then there were just other people just milling around, which I always find to be cool at uh, the Critics' Choice events. You know, Larry Wilmore, like, it is Larry Wilmore. <laughs> That's Ed Gathie from Heart of They Fall. Okay, so it started. Mario Van Peoples came in when we came in. I was like, okay. This is gonna be pretty special. TT, what was your initial impression, man, before they even opened the doors, man, during the reception period? What was your initial 
uh, kind of, you know, like like feeling about the evening, watching all the excitement, the people milling around, looking all, mm -hmm. you know, I don't even know what the fashion was. It was just because they didn't really tell us exactly what the. No, they, they didn't they say did it was not. black tie, it was casual. So people were wearing yeah. all kind of stuff, man. Go ahead, TT. Yeah, and see, I got I got grief when I got back to Cincinnati and people were looking at my pictures. And they were like, "Why were you Why were you up in there wearing jeans?" And I was like, "Well, because I was told we could wear jeans." <laughs> so hey, I had a blazer on though. It was you know black turtleneck, but I'm comfortable in my jeans and in my Adidas. So that's what I did. I mixed the. It was like you know professional upscale on the top half. And it was me on the bottom half. That's all I need to say. That was just my thing. So I did get a little grief about that. But for me, the funny thing, as soon as I walked in, and you're right, Tim, with the kind of milling about, you were, you and the crew were the first people that I really saw and zeroed in on when I, <laughs> when I walked in the door. And I always feel the same way. And again, I'm a very new member of Critics Choice, but I feel like I found my core group of people that are part of the organization and they're like family. So it was like, as soon as I looked up and I saw my fam, I was like, okay, I'm feeling good. There were people that I hadn't seen in a while. Literally there were people I hadn't seen since 2019 or 2020, early 2020 during the, during the last time we did the show together, mm -hmm. but getting there in that room, seeing everybody connected, you know, the handshakes and the hugs, which again, the handshakes and the hugs were a big part of the experience too, because we've, we haven't been able to spend that kind of time together. It was great to let that be kind of the opening, which then I honestly feel like our camaraderie and our reconnecting kind of opened us up to once we got the talent that was there in some ways they, it felt like they understood and appreciated that feeling of family and, and friend and kinship coming together so that we were all just able to kind of relax and hang out and talk. And, you know, there was, there was more than enough people, which we will get into who were there, right. but it was not overwhelming, which really meant that you had time to really have great conversations and really catch up with some of the talent that you've either interviewed in the past, or maybe people that you didn't even know, right. but you got to, you got the chance to get to know them that night. Right. And that was, that was amazing, especially considering the idea that we aren't really, at least in my case, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to go to the big show this year. So this felt like my version of the big show. Right. And I had a blast. I really did. It was it was amazing. So to your point, TT, um, when you talked about our tribe, it was interesting because you're right. It was the first time we'd had an event in like two years. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, of course, people like Wilson Morales, Sean was kind of milling around, you know, because he had a lot of, he was wearing multiple hats that night. Jamal Finkley showed up from Black Tree, um, Katia Woods from Cup of Soul, uh, Pair of Weights, uh, Sharonda Williams is in the house. I mean, everybody who are part of our core group, you know, a lot of these people we see several times a year, but it was cool because everybody was in the room. And as I said, um, there were a lot of celebrities that, you know, I didn't even, I knew who was on the bill, but I saw some of them come in. And it was interesting because Larry Wilmore, um, um, E. Emmanuel, who's done our show a couple of times, E and I were hanging out. And I said, because he kept following me, you know, and with TT, I would tell him, just follow me. We <clears throat> people. And um, so Larry Wilmore was just hanging out, which we found out later on, he was there for uh, Rob Thede to introduce her and it was cool talking to him. And, you know, like to, to TT's point, there were like 35 tables of 10. So it was like 350 people. So it was the largest celebration of black cinema that we'd ever had. And I think back to the first one, it probably was about maybe a hundred people there total at the house of blues. So it, that was a really a tight, intimate room, but this felt like an intimate room. But the other takeaway, that, and I talked to multiple people in TTU were there, so you heard some of them say it, is that even the, the celebrities that were there were taken aback by the amount of their peers that were in the room at the same time. So, you know, right. you, got, right. you got Ava DuVernay going, oh, this is cool. You know, Hallie talked about it when she gave her mm -hmm. speech about, you know, I, I, I normally don't see rooms like this, right? 
Um, yeah. it, it was it was really, really interesting. Even Patina Miller, I ran into her, uh, who I'd interviewed several weeks ago for uh, Raising Cain and Power Book Three. And, you know, she was like, man, there's a lot of people here. I'm like, there are a lot of people here tonight. Mm -hmm. um, Nisi Nash, I thought, did a really good job as the host of the evening. But some of the funnier conversations. Now, TT, you were with me when we met Method Man, right? No, I was not. Ah! And, I, and, I, and I'm kicking myself. <laughs> yeah. I, I came back and I was like, of all the people I didn't get to talk to, he was one that I was like, man, I'm sorry. I missed I missed out on that opportunity. I was teasing. I was teasing him. I said, um, you know, last time I was out here, um, you know, the, the you know, Raekwon, Ghost and Jizza were here as part of what I forget what the, the tour is mm -hmm. called, but they're all doing their classic albums. And I was like, Matt, you could have done to Kyle. You could have joined the tour. You, you know, could have been for y'all. And he was like. Nah, bro, I'm booked up, man. I'm acting right now. <laughs> <laughs> and he's a big dude, man. That's why I said he, he is a big dude. Method, Meth is like 6'4. See, I don't yeah. Meth is tall, bro. I was like, dang. We went to pose for a pitch. I'm like, this is not gonna end well, man. I'm gonna look like his son standing. <laughs> <laughs> like, yo, yo, you're right. Because when I saw the picture, I was like, I was like, who's this giant dude standing there? And, and he had his glasses on. He did not look like Method Man. He looked no, like no. <laughs> when, like, when he said, when he what said, is this? When he say, I come to bring the pain. Meth can really bring the pain. Yeah. <laughs> so that was that was cool. The other one was Ava, which was interesting because I was standing with you two, and I was like. Yeah, the last time I saw Ava didn't really go well, man. So, you know, I'm going to fall back and let y'all do y'all. And, you know, she was taking some pictures and y'all were standing there. She looked over E's shoulder and she saw me and came past him and gave me a hug. I was like, oh, I guess we're good. <laughs> I guess we're straight. So it's, it's always cool. Like I said, I, I've said it on the show. I've said it to her. I've known Ava Duvin name, man, since, God. 1996, 1997, when she was a publicist, I remember mm -hmm. vividly being down at the NPAA here in DC and having to get on a call where, you know, at the time she was working on some project for Warner Brothers and she had me, Wilson, Sean, like a lot of the folks that I still know to this day, we all remember Ava as a publicist. So I remember when she told us she was getting into filmmaking, and I was like, oh, that's cute. And <laughs> that cuteness has really worked out for Abe over the years. So I, you heard me tell her the other night, I'm like, I'm just, yeah. I just continue to be proud of you. I really am because Ava is somebody we know from the ground yeah. up. She didn't, she didn't fall into filmmaking. She slowly built the brand. And now mm -hmm. whew, she is, yeah. she is super dominant in the field right now. So I was happy yeah. to see her. Yeah, you know, it's funny you should mention that because I had two minor takeaways from the night and she she and Barry Jenkins are part of my minor takeaways uh. for the night because the two of them are people that, again, we've, we've known and worked with for a long time. I mean, I, Ava's been around a lot longer than Barry, right. but as someone who's done educational programming, I remember seeing his first film, Medicine for Melancholy, yeah. digging it and was kind of like, yeah, I should keep, I should keep my eye on this guy to see what he's doing. And he did that little future states uh, short that was part of the series. And it was such a strong piece of that, that I started using that for educational programming. And it was at the very beginning of me getting on Twitter and I would kind of tweet out, well, Hey, I'm doing it. I'm working with this group over here or, you know, in this school and I'm showing Barry Jenkins's, you know, installment from future states. And he would he would reach back out to say, oh, my God, thank you for using my work. How did the kids respond to it? And we started, you know, kind of going back and forth that way through social media. And then, you know, as his career picked up and he started doing other things, as a matter of fact, you know, when Beale Street could talk, Kiki, Kiki Lane, who's the, the lead in that, is from Cincinnati. Right. So, you know, when they did the friends and family screening of that film here, they reached out to me, asked me to kind of be the Q&A and the host for it. And I, again, tweeted out about that. And he's, throughout the years, has always been really gracious about following up. And Ava's the same way. Like, if I use her stuff, 
Right. She reaches out. But the thing is, you know, in their cases, and this is the big takeaway, they handle their own social media, too. Right. So it's not like there's just somebody else that's out there in the world who's an assistant who's doing that for them. They do that directly. And it feels, you know, that they understand the relationship that they have with us. Right. And and that back and forth. And that's something that that, again, is part of having that tribe and everybody in the room being together. Right. That feeling matters a whole lot more. We aren't going to have those kinds of relationships and connections with a whole bunch of people out in the industry, but we know that we're going to get to have it with them. And we know that it's going to be an ongoing thing. And that's, I, I give mad respect for that. Well, you know, it's interesting, man. I was listening to you. And again, you know, I agree. I mean, I've got tons of Ava stories because over the years we've had conversations. I'll see her at Sundance and, you know, we'll have little smaller sides. Barry Jenkins, I think I remember Charles. I'm not sure if I remember about telling you the story, but last time I interviewed him for Beale Street Can Talk, we must have spent like 25 minutes in the room to the point where the publicist was like, you know, we got the speed. Barry was like, no, no, I'm good. We talking over here. But we had a conversation and one of the big reveals was I asked him, do, you know, do you and your other peers get together and talk? And he told us about, um, you know, they get on a conference call, all these black filmmakers every week. So he's like telling me stories of him talking to Ryan Coogler or Tim Story mm. or Ava DuVernay. And, I, and the fact that they do that to me warms my heart because that they have their own tribe of folks who is not a lot of them. It's maybe 10 of these, 10 or 15 of these guys, but they all talk to one another, which I think yeah. is mad cool and help each other out. So to your point, TT, you're absolutely right. Uh, folks like us who spend a lot of time, and Charles would be included in that as well, interviewing these people, it's fun to see them on the award circuit. Like uh, you heard me teasing mm -hmm. Tessa Thompson because somebody was like, well, you know, I'm over here with Tessa. I said, you know, Tessa wants to be with her OGs. You know, Tessa and I go back. And I, I'll whisper, it to, and Tessa, you saw her. She's like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? You know, yeah. I said, Sundance, you know, we, we've been over here. We've done this. Tessa, Tessa's mad cool. Look, look, we had Sundance one year at the supermarket. Tessa's in there shopping. I'm like, what's up, Lady Thompson? She's like, hey, what's happening? It's, it's that kind of relationship, yeah. to PT's point, that they yeah. understand that, you know, mainstream media may embrace me, but there is a core of Black journalists who are going to be there for us, come rain, come shine. And I always love to, to value those relationships. Ruth Negger, same way. Yeah. Seen Ruth several times. I was telling her, we were talking about times I'd interviewed her. I'm like, Ruth is cool. Ruth is mad cool. And, and to the point, uh, <laughs> Charles, with T.T., and Emmanuel was smothering Ruth. I was like, man, let Ruth breathe. <laughs> I was talking to Rebecca Hall, right? And I turned around because I had talked to Ruth and Tessa first. So I said, let me get over here with Rebecca Hall because I told her earlier, I said, I'm going to run into you on the award circuit. We could continue the conversation about passing, right? So we did that for what seemed like 15 minutes. I turned around. I'm like, man, y'all still on Ruth? <laughs> 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 Y'all were like, yeah, Ruth, and one more thing. <laughs> so, so, I, so I can so only TV. laugh about that because it was really true. We it felt like we had just we were just all over her. And yet the pictures that I have, when I brought those pictures back home, my youngest brother was looking at one of them and he was like, dude, like, was she all over you? Cause she was she was just, it was like she understood she was with fam. So you know, we're like hugging on each other, taking pictures, talking about places to go to eat when she goes to Chicago or when she comes to, to Cincinnati. We like, we hooked her up. We're like, yo, if you come, we'll hook you up and take you out and have a good time. It was, it was, again, it was like family reunion style kind of, kind of conversation. And that's why it, it lasted easily. You're right. It was like 15 minutes. We were still, still in, in the middle of all of that. It was great. All right. We had a couple more takeaways. Uh, you, wait, 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 wait. I have yet to see what happened to Halle Berry. Now, I, I know that she was there because I saw a lot of conversations, and con but I oh, saw very I little pictures. I saw very little pictures <laughs> uh, with, with, with Halle Berry. What, what happened with that? Okay, Cause, cause, okay. Because I know TT. I know TT is not down with, with Halle Berry. TT's not going to say it, so I'm going to say it for him, right? Um, let's just say 
that um, I, and I'll tell my story. I can't I can't really speak to TT, but I remember several years ago I was at the Critics Choice Awards, and uh, the Blackish table was there. So you know I got a chance to meet Yari Shahidi and uh, forget the guy who plays her brother, the light skin mm -hmm. older guy. So yeah. we took some pictures, right? And Jennifer Lewis was at the table. I'm putting you on blast, Jennifer. And um, I went back to talk to Jennifer Lewis and I was like, I'm coming back because you know, the show is starting. You know, when the show starts, you got to get back out of camera range. I was like, I'd be back afterwards. And Jennifer Lewis, I don't know if I said something or what happened, but she started screaming at me. And like, it is very disconcerting to be in a room like that. And you have somebody barking at you. And I'm like, yo, if it's between Jennifer Lewis and Tim Gordon, they know they don't know Tim Gordon. They do know Jennifer Lewis. So I must have did something. So I'm like, I'm gonna go over here. I'm business to stay away from you. So when I get a feeling that celebrities don't want to be involved, like you know, um, I was telling you the story. Mm. Maybe Charles, I was telling the story, and we saw Denzel Washington a couple of years ago, and he didn't come with any security, but he sat at the table. And he had this look on his face like he was reliving Alonzo from training day and nobody talked to Denzel Washington. <laughs> so you ask about Halle Berry, I'll tell you that, that Halle Berry was nice. You know, uh, my significant other got a picture with Halle. I know a lot of other people did. There was just something very disconcerting that every time I went over there that she was sitting next to Taraji P. Henson. And Taraji P. Henson, T.T., uh, am I making this she up? She said She's security. <laughs> she did not, she she's, did not she's look security. inviting at all. I was like, because at one point, me and e, I was like, look at it. She was like, and every time I walked over there, I was like, I'm not messing with Taraji tonight. And Taraji's cool. I mean, Taraji and I have had conversation. And TT, if I was in, in, a, in a better place, I would have probably went over there and tried it because I'm like, Taraji, come on, man. You know, you, we done talked this out. We done, we done talked to each other several times, but she just looked like she just wasn't in the mood on Monday night. And I was like, I'm not in the mood to have this special night be like blown up by, ah! Yes. <laughs> and see, and I haven't been around long enough. So I, immediately for me, I was like, I looked over a couple of times and I was like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not ready to go over there. <laughs> like it just, it, other people were doing it and I was proud of them, but I was like, yeah, I'm not ready for that one yet. So well, it was I'll, like, I could admire from afar. And I did, I had a great time admiring from afar. Bro, I'm telling you, and, and I'm not making this up, man. I've done this enough times to know that there are people like you saw Jennifer Hudson. Jennifer Hudson, mm -hmm. was in oh, yeah. she was running oh, yeah. around all night uh, taking oh, pictures. Yeah. The cats from Ted Lasso, Brett Goldstein couldn't have been nicer. You know, uh, yes. we stopped him. He stopped everybody because he sort of got it. You know, I'm here. People watch the show. They like my character. Boom. Um, I, I know years past, I, the, I love the marvelous Mrs. Maisel, right? Mm -hmm. And to the point that every time Rachel Bronstein and that crew are there, I have, oh, yeah. I, have I go around that whole table and I've done it several yeah. years in a row where I just tease mm -hmm. everybody. I'm like, you the man, good season for you. You, Joe, you still, a, never mind. <laughs> You're not a good character, but everybody else I love. But you get the sense sometimes that there are, and, and it's not that these are bad people, right? I always mm. tell people they're not bad yeah. people. You just catch them on bad nights. Like the, the right. one time right. I tell the story about Mary J. Blige, I met her once. It was not a good day for Mary. And it doesn't take away that I still love Mary's music, support Mary's projects and things of that nature. You got to be a grown up. It ain't personal. It's right. like, it could be, you could be having a bad day and somebody roll up on you and it's like, Hey, man, I'm not a bad dude. I'm just going through some stuff today. Mm. And Taraji, I think, you know, I don't know. I mean, she she gave a great intro speech for Halle Berry. Yeah, but, she um, did. but I didn't see how. Did you see Taraji be hissing in a lot of pictures? <laughs> did anybody take any pictures with Taraji P. Henson? I mean, seriously. No, I mean, no. I don't no I, I'm with you. I didn't see. I didn't, I didn't see had anybody it. with a Taraji P. Henson picture. Yeah. Like, yeah, I saw a couple of photos of her on on like. Uh, no, 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 no! I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about like her with. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. TV, no, no, her yeah, no, no, nobody sent me. Nobody sent me anything. Mm -mm. No, no. Taraji, Taraji wasn't taking a lot of pictures, man, on Monday night. But, but I, I, I get off of Taraji and talk about that. I just thought it was a really special night. Um, I yeah. think the fact that they gave 
They had Mel, I mean, Mario Van Peoples there uh, who introduced Ava DuVernay with the uh, Melvin Van Peoples. They renamed the award the Melvin Van Peoples Trailblazer Award. They had, he, he arranged to have Criteria, Criterion, the, the uh, set. I got mine right here, TT's grabbing his. They gave everybody one of these, the box set for, oh, there, you can't see it in my, yeah, there it is right there. Oh, yeah, you can see mine. Yeah, so they gave everybody one of these in a nice Criterion bag. It was, a, it was, a, <laughs> I would have brought you one extra one, Charles, but um, yeah, man, yeah, everybody's yeah. at the table, man. <laughs> it was no empty seats. <laughs> I, I would have brought you one, but. I would have brought you one, bro, but yeah, man, <laughs> but it was, it was, um, it was pretty special, man. I thought the food was great because this is also a difference because we go to the Critics' Choice Awards and you know, there's some 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 champagne on the table and some foo foo foo, but it ain't like food. They serve dinner yeah. <laughs> that night, and it was good. I was yeah. like, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, Charles, right. Charles, yeah. I'm just telling you, man. Uh, kudos one more time to executive producer, colleague, and most importantly, friend Sean Edwards, who yeah, you did the thing, Sean. That was great. That was great on Monday night. That and, and and I can't. He announced at the end, "We're looking forward to the fifth annual." I was like, "Booking tickets now!" <laughs> <laughs> Look at Charles's face, <laughs> dude. Let me just say though, Charles, as part of this whole process, I'm not gonna pull a Tim and keep rubbing this in, but <laughs> I, I literally was only there for the show. I flew out of Cincinnati Monday morning at like 8.45 after a whole bunch of travel plans changing and all that kind of stuff. I get into LA at about 1 or 1.15. I have enough time to run a couple of errands, get some, you know, get a snack in my belly and take a shower before going to the show. And I literally left the next morning at like 11.15 to come right back. So I was not there long at all. But next year... I'm going to do what Tim and Rod and some other people did. I, it's going to be like, my wife and I are coming. We're booking. We're coming early. We're hanging out. Because again, we, I, I, and I told my wife this when I got back. I was like, yeah, we should have we made this an event. Because again, we weren't sure about going to the big show. This was, this was the big show. And I do. I, I have felt horrible for the last three days. Anytime it comes up in conversation around our house. Because I feel like. I'm doing to my wife what Tim is doing to you. She keeps looking at she keeps looking at me like, why, you, why, why second, are you still talking about this? Hold on a second, Charles. Look, 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 look. I know somebody that was on the planning board for this thing, knowing and and they put this thing together knowing that I had an event that I couldn't attend, uh, couldn't cancel out of. So you know, it it, it made it it was even worse. Yeah, and, yeah. And see, I, I didn't do I didn't do that to my wife. But, but guess she, what? But she feels like you right now. Just know that she feels the same way. So next year, she goes. Next year, next year. See, see, my significant other. She played it right. She couldn't go to the big show because you know she had a work conflict. Mm -hmm. She'll be in Vegas. So I was like, well, if you can't go to that show, this will be the equivalent of that show. And it actually worked out that even if I don't go to the big show, this was the show. <laughs> this was the one you really needed to be at. Um, small, intimate room. You know. But I'm just saying my takeaway uh, before we let it go is, you know, you had time to have conversations with James Samuels, Robin Thede, who shouted out our Black Real Awards uh, from the stage. Um, you know, um, Dion Cole, who I thought gave the funniest speech of the night. That was hilarious. It was so funny, in fact, that if you weren't in the room, you will not get the full speech because it is not going to make the final Yeah, I'm sorry. That was funny. That was funny. So I, 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 I'm sorry. I wish. I, I wonder if Wilson, because Wilson got a lot of this stuff. Oh. I wonder yeah. if Wilson recorded that. That I, that would be interesting to know. But yeah, the Halle Berry speech is out there. The Barry Jenkins speech. Somebody should have recorded that one. That was great. oh yeah, oh, that yeah. was great. Um, but but like I said, man, it was a great night. TT, but think about this for a second. Will Smith, Idris Elba, Regina King didn't show up. It was still yeah. a great night. Now yeah. imagine if the three of them would have been in the room. 
<laughs> with everybody else that was there, you'd have been like, <laughs> yeah. wow. So are you telling me that they're like me, wishing they were in the room that happened that where it happened? No, no. Will Will did his uh piece from a set. He's he's filming emancipation right now, so he's in New Orleans. Uh, but but Will did say in his speech, I really do wish I was there because uh compared to where I'm at now, yeah. He... <laughs> I really wish I was with you. <laughs> So yeah, man, but it, yeah. it was just it was just a great night, man. So any final takeaway CT from Monday night's event where I had the program because I can prove I was in the building. That's important. I've got yeah. the I've got um I've got my memories. And I, I we went to LA on Saturday and hung out. And to your point, um, I got a lot of uh a lot of Los Angeles time. I rented a car. Mm-hmm. We went to the comedy. I mean, I went to, to, to Chocolate Sundays out in West Hollywood on Sunday night, watched some comedy, went to, went to a couple of nice places and had dinner around L.A. It's just it's a lot of fun, man. And, and I'm already booked to go back out there in like three weeks for the big show. So okay. we'll see. We'll see. I mean, um, I think what's going to happen, T.T., since you were there, you know, you saw the air air walls. I think they got right. up. Both of yeah. those in order to get like the big room, but it's still going to be small and intimate, man. It's, oh, yeah. Yeah. It's not a big space, man. Not at all. Yeah, it is. going. It's going to be a small room. And again, yeah, my final takeaway. The interesting thing for me is, again, having that experience Monday night and listening to those speeches and hearing everybody again talk about that sense of community and everything that was going on in that room. Mm-hmm. The The amazing thing for me is tomorrow night, I'm going to be at the first annual celebration of black filmmakers in Cincinnati. Nice. And they reached out to me and they, they asked me to do, you know, a little 15 minute speech about sort of the future of, of film in Cincinnati, especially for, for black filmmakers. And I'm going to be pulling some of the, some of the takeaways from Monday night. <laughs> I'm going to be talking about what Ava and Barry talked about in terms of making those connections and finding people that you can work with that you want to continue working with and that you need to support. And the idea, again, that back and forth that we have with Black journalists and, and, and Black celebrities in Hollywood and how we're all working together, because it's those kinds of lessons <clears throat> that are so important for these regional communities out here like Cincinnati that are doing these kinds of events that are, again, kind of setting up the stage so that we can find and cultivate talent in our communities and the, yes we can send that talent off so they can go out and do bigger things in other parts of the world but they're also always going to know that they can come back home and they're going to get that love and support at home so i'm yeah my heart is has been swelled over this week and by sunday morning when i wake up i may you know i may be the happiest man in the world knowing that i had those two events that i could book in together uh, for us, and again, the idea of moving forward, knowing that we got we got a we got a lot going on and a lot that we're going to continue doing, and like Halle Berry said, the awards themselves don't have to matter. It's just us going out there doing good work. So that's well, it. I will I will just basically say that for me <clears throat> to see Sean and Jamal and Wilson and TT and Emmanuel and I'm trying to think Rad who was came mm-hmm. flew in from Toronto. Uh, you know, to see the tribe. I mean, these these are yeah. these are my cinematic brothers, man. These are the cats. You know, everybody's out doing their own thing, and we are all kind of we come together like Voltron and form and at these events. But it's always fun, man. I mean, you know, and that's what Charles Charles is missing that because you know you haven't been out of there part of the been ingrate ingratiated into the community, man. You got to get into the community and see these people, man, because like to TT's point, they become like your family. Like they might, you might see them all the time, like several times a year. But when y'all get together, we have a lot of fun. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> we were out in L.A. a couple of weeks ago. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, right? we, we had fun. Yeah, we were. I was there. I was there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you oh were, yeah, we got to we, we spend some more time, man. Because you know, there's nothing sexier than watching Sean and Wilson go at it with TT and I laughing, <laughs> and investigating. That was funny. What? Wait a minute. Hey, Wilson, did you? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, 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 I got. We gotta leave Wilson alone because I gotta get some pictures from him. So Wilson I gotta be nice. 
I got to be nice to Wilson until I get my tel- my Tucker Thompson pictures. Then, then we're good. <laughs> Wilson, Wilson is Wilson. I talked to Wilson a bunch yesterday. We were laughing. So this is what we do, man. It's family. So yep. let us let us transition on to the next piece. These black classic films. TT did not get my email because I don't think I sent it to him. So this is a test of TT's critichood to find out how good he is on the spot. <laughs> we're talking about these black Christmas <clears throat> classics. Uh, this show came about TT because uh, when when we were on the plane traveling on the way out to LA, I watched Best Man Holiday, mm-hmm. uh, and I was telling Charles, I said, you know, I don't know whether it's because you know I, I've done this for several decades, I'm getting a little older and getting a little more sentimental, but these movies hit me in the in the spot where you know I'm like doing stuff like this at the end, like, oh man, Whew, that was a good one. <laughs> so when I watched Best Man Holiday, I was at the end. I was like, "Oh man, Ooh, that was that was a good film." So we talked last year when we were thinking about programming uh, Christmas movies that when Jingle Jangle came out, that we don't really have a lot of classic black movies. So I've got nine titles here, and I don't know how many of these are classic, but I just you know I'll just go through this. Um, Holiday Heart, Ving Rhames. From like around oh, yeah. 2000. Anybody, would anybody consider that to be a classic? Is that like a must watch every year black Christmas movie? I don't think so. Mm, I, I would say no. I mean, it's a good film. Um, just to see Ving Rhames again, it'd be nice. But I, I, I'm not putting this up there as one of the ones that I definitely have to see before the Christmas season is out. DT? Let me just say that you sprung you sprung this on me. You're right. I'm 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 here right now. I'm 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 hearing about it. I'm figuring it out. But I gotta let you in on a secret. I I'm I'm Scrooge. I hate the holidays. So the whole Christmas the whole Christmas movie thing in general is just not my bag. But right, well, let's I have on. I have seen I have seen a number of these films, and yes, I would agree with the idea that. <laughs> Holiday Heart would not necessarily, I mean, again, and I'm, I must be tough because I got a really, really small list of like holiday films. That wouldn't be one of them. But we'll see what else, what comes out of this discussion that, that might move me a little. All right. So, so a little. People, at home, people at home who are not familiar with Holiday Heart, Holiday Heart tells a story after losing this police officer lover, Christmas drag queen Holiday Heart, played by Bing Rames, meets a 12-year-old Nikki played by Jessica Quinn Reynolds and her drug-addicted mother, Wanda, Alfre Woodard. Uh, you know, Hart finds relief from heartache and a renewed sense of purpose when he steps in as a father figure to Nikki and welcomes the two women to his life. Um, television movie from 2000. Um, so I don't think that one would, would qualify. So let us, so we've talked enough about Holiday Heart, and I'm glad that TC, TT has given us his whole Scroogeness because uh, that will help us uh, navigate some of these films. So up next is a film from 2007 that I remember reviewing during the big 2007 year. You know, we talk about 2013. You had American Gangster. Uh, you know, This Christmas. Um, you had there was a bunch of films. The Kingdom from 2007 that had black leads. But The Perfect Holiday uh, was a film that I remember it came out, which was the other Christmas movie to this Christmas, which we will talk a little bit about later. Now, this Christmas is absolutely a holiday, Black holiday classic. What do we think about The Perfect (laughs) Holiday, directed by Lance Rivera with Mars Chestnut, Gabrielle Union, Faison Love, Charlie Murphy? Um, This one tells the story of Nancy, played by Union, a divorced mother of three, who feels especially lonely during the holidays. Since in her sadness, her youngest daughter, Emily, played by Khalil Bryant, has a plan to make her mom happy again. She asks Benjamin, played by Chestnut, a department store Santa Claus, to pay Nancy a compliment. And we're off and running with the perfect holiday. Uh, what say you, I'll start with Charles this time, who, who's giving me the face. What say you to the perfect holiday? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I, I love Gabrielle Union. I think she's a, 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 a wonderful actress. But uh, no, this is, this, I mean, it's a cute movie. I, I'll put it on the lifetime scale. You know, it, 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 it's, mm-hmm. it's good. It's, I mean, passable. But I mean, no. 
no, no, no. She, wow. Gabrielle's wow. done a lot better things with her career and this, you know, no. <clears throat> All righty. So TT, what say you? <laughs> I'm in this, I'm in the same boat. Here's the deal. I like Gabrielle Union. I'm cool with Morris Chestnut, Queen Latifah, everybody in it. There are better films for most of them, probably further along this, this list and discussion that we're going to have. This one's definitely that lifetime end, which for me, lifetime is definitely the low, low end of things. So yeah, <laughs> we can we can make that we can make that move to the higher, higher ground anytime you're ready. All right. Wait, wait, uh, wait, is, is Hallmark higher or lower than Lifetime? Ooh, ooh. <laughs> For the holiday stuff, I would probably go with, with Hallmark over Lifetime. That tells you Lifetime really is it's like sub basement. All we right, cannot, all right. We cannot use go. this show when it's time for me to go after sponsorship because y'all are trashing these, these networks. Uh, our next up film is from 2016. Walter Meyer, played by Danny Glover, is a retired mechanic who's lost the love of his life one year earlier. Now that the holiday season is here, he invites his daughters, Rachel, once again, Gabrielle Union, stepping into a Christmas project, Cheryl, played by Kimberly Elise and Sons, Christian, Romany Malco, you know, from the the, uh, the the Best Man series. I'm sorry, no, from the uh, the, the Steve Harvey. Um, oh, yeah. What is it called? Um, oh, God, I just watched this film a couple of days ago. Uh, Think Like a Man yeah. series. Thank Think you. Like a Man, there you go. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. And Evan, Jesse T. Usher to his house for a traditional celebration. Poor Walter soon realizes that if his bickering children and the rest of the family can spend five days together under the same roof, it will truly be a Christmas miracle. In Almost Christmas, directed by David E. Talbert. That's another one, man. Uh, TT, I was. <laughs> okay. After everything we've said so far, this is getting us a little closer to where we probably need to go. And here's, here's my rating for this. Because again, not being a holiday Christmas kind of guy at all. The, the holiday film overall that works the best for me is something like The Family Stone. This, this is going for those Family Stone-ish kind of vibes. It, it's not there. It doesn't hit the highs that I would like, but it's closer than anything we've talked about so far. So it's, again, we're inching our way up the, up the, up the rungs here, you know, but it, yeah, I'm still not... Even even as as goofy and funny as I think Monique Monique is in this, yeah, I'm not. I'm still not ready to ready to say that I've been moved by the by the by the holiday spirit with this. Charles, TT is right on the money again. Wow, um, man, this, this so is a wrong. better this is a better Gabrielle Union movie than the. <laughs> but, <laughs> right. but it's it's so still not getting quite there. You know, I I do like you said. I do like the. The, the elements that they, they, uh, David Talbert puts in there, it's kind of like one of his stage plays. It's, it's, it's yeah. good where it is and that, that's, you know, I'm not falling over my, uh, myself to go see it. So All right. uh, All right. move on. Let's, I'm let's pulling, see what else. big guns out. Look, look, you see me cocking the gun right now? We're going to 1996. Let's move on. Look, 1996, a cleric begins to doubt himself and is visited by an angel. The heavenly emissary is supposed to help the good reverend offer his mid, mid, over his midlife crisis, but he's distracted by the cleric's lovely young wife. A remake with gospel music of the bishop's wife is the preacher's wife, Denzel Washington, uh, Courtney B. Vance, and the late great Whitney Houston in this one. Uh, I will start with Charles Kirkland, man, as a gospel, you know, as Pastor Chuck, man, does the preacher's wife work for you? Um, I think we've discussed this movie once before <laughs> <Here we go. laughs> to, to the point where, um, I, 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 I really didn't, did not like this film basically because of, the, 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 wow. it, I mean, the re the, I, I love the, the original, the Bishop's wife and where they went with this, the, the, with this storyline just didn't work for me. I really didn't like how they were trying to make. Denzel fall in love with Whitney and everything that that just didn't work for me and it, it just seemed religiously improper I should say although it's a great soundtrack I listen to the soundtrack all all day long but I'm not in, I'm not all the way in for the preacher's wife. Uh, TT music yes 
<laughs> music, yes. <laughs> and again, you know, like I said, I'm not into Christmas music. I'm not into Christmas movies. But yeah, the music for this, yeah, it gets me closer to the spirit. Yeah, I have similar kinds of issues. But again, the interesting thing is this is the one that feels like it should have it should have worked better. Not only is it a remake, but again, you pull in Denzel and Whitney. Yeah, we all want that to work. And the fact that it doesn't is it's a little disappointing. All right, man, let's keep it moving, man. We're going to 2006 in the Wayback Machine. The discovery that she has a terminal illness prompts introverted saleswoman Georgia, played by Queen Latifah, to reflect on what she realizes has been an overly cautious life. She withdraws her life savings, jets off to Europe, and she lives like a millionaire. The only thing missing from her new life is her longtime crush, Sean, played by Lady Love Cool James in The Last Holiday. TT, this one has got to move you and stir your soul. Does it really? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Look, like, does it really? <laughs> and now let me let me explain. Let me explain something here. Again, in theory, there's there's a lot to like about this. This again, we you know, Queen Latifah was was in some earlier titles we talked about. This is this is getting better. But I have an issue, and I've done tons of interviews with the dude, and, and I love, hey, Mama Said Knock You Out is, is, is high up there for me. I have a difficult time accepting him as a romantic lead sometimes. I just, it just doesn't, he doesn't really elevate things for me in that way. And yeah, I'm not sure that I'm supposed to even buy him here either. So yeah, I feel like he was the lump of coal in the movie for me, but that, that's all I'm going to say about that. Charles, you got to I, I got to get somebody. So, somebody's got to like one of these holiday classics. <laughs> okay, let me just say this. And <laughs> we can move on real quickly. Um, <laughs> two rap icons. That's, that's about as far as I want to go with that. That's all, I mean, they're, they're good actors now. I mean, I see uh, LL on, on TV and Queen Latifah is the enforcer. But uh, maybe they were just cutting their teeth back there. So, you know, uh, you know, maybe. All right, moving on. Matt, <laughs> it, was, it seems like I'm not getting a lot of love. We're going up to 2013, where Langston, played by Jacob Lattimore, Baltimore teen raised by a single mother, played by Jennifer Hudson, travels to New York City to spend the Christmas holidays with his estranged relatives, the Reverend Cornell Cobbs, played by Forrest Whitaker, and his wife, Aretha, played by Angela Bassett. All righty, so you see. Hudson, Whitaker, Bassett, right? Mm -hmm. However, Langston soon finds out that Cobbs has strict rules, of course, as far as Whitaker always does, and he's unwilling to follow them. Instead, he sets out to on a return journey to his mother and finds the value of faith, healing of family along the way in Casey Lemon's Black Nativity. Uh, Titi, you know, I can see it on your face, man. You are moved by this one. <laughs> okay man i'm just gonna say charles you're helping me feel better about this because i'm not the screws that i thought i was because you were joining me on a lot of these wow man you got to, something else this man. one this one unfortunately is a little too earnest to me it really is i again it's it's got we've been saying before it's got a strong cast there are elements that i'm really I'm, I'm really feeling drawn towards, or at least that I should feel drawn towards. But yeah, this was, I mean, I needed, I needed a little, a little more humor, a little, I needed it to chill out a little bit. It got a little heavy. And it, I don't think that the heaviness was necessarily warranted. You could have, right. you could have given me this story without it, without it kind of sinking my, sinking my spirits and it sank my spirits. Charles, did you, were your spirits sank? I can tell by looking at your face, you don't. It doesn't look popular. You, you know, with a pedigree this this rich, you would expect something of such a high quality. You got a director like Casey Lemons who did *Ease Ease Bayou*, and, and you've got the actors that you've mentioned. It's based on a Langston Hughes play. Uh, you you would think that this would be the go to, but uh, it's just somewhere. I don't know what happened with the chemistry in this film. It it just doesn't work. It didn't work for me. 
And I just, you know, it's it's just okay. All right, here we go. We've gone through six <laughs> of the nine so far. <laughs> and T.T. Stern Enzi and Charles Kirkland Jr., who are esteemed critics in my eyes, have literally told people li- watching this show, like, you don't even need to waste your time with any of these first six. Now, I dare you on these last three, because, you know, these three to me, if we're talking classics, these are classics. And we will start off with decades after being betrayed by his apprentice, a once joyful toy maker finds new hope when his bright young granddaughter arrives in his doorstep in David E. Talbert's instant classic from 2020, starring Madeline Mills, Forrest Whitaker, Keegan-Michael Key, Anika Noni Rose, Felicia Rashad, in Jingle Jangle. All right, I'm gonna start with TT. Um, always start with TT. Go with Charles. Start with Charles, man. <laughs> Charles Kirkland Jr. Pull out a lump of coal and tell me Jingle Jangle's not a classic. I- I'm waiting for this. Go ahead. Jingle Jangle is a classic. I enjoyed this movie thoroughly. I- and I think it- when it came out that year, I put that on one of my mm-hmm. top ten movies of the year. Just because it was so, it was so beautiful. David Talbert got everything right about this mm. film, and I, it, it's one of those things that I make time now every year. I mean, it's only been out. This is only the second <laughs> year, so I make time to watch Jingle Jangle. I, I really appreciate the, the work that Madeline Mills did. Mm. Forrest Whitaker is, is great, and and like I said. Uh, Netflix backed up the truck to D- David Talbert to, for, mm. to do this film, and he did it right. He did TT. Watch this. TT doesn't like Christmas movies. Did you? You didn't like this one either. You know, we. This is this is my favorite so far. <laughs> sure. And I will. <laughs> sure it is. And I will say this though, yeah, because it that's probably damning it with faint, faint praise. But here's the deal. This, you're right, Netflix did back the truck up for this. It looks and feels like a really great fantasy. And you, you need and you want that for the holidays. Family films, that, that whole, again, you get all of the vibes, all the spirits. I'm not going to say that it completely moves me because, again, remember, I did say I'm a Scrooge. <laughs> but this has all of the elements in place, and they work unlike a lot of the others, they all actually work together. It still didn't, you know, Tim, I'm not, I'm not doing this yet. You're not there yet. Okay. I'm not there yet, but I, but I, but I understand how and why this one works. All righty. So let's move up to two, go back to 2007. At holiday time, family matriarch, Madeir, matriarch, excuse me, Madeir Whitfield, played by Loretta Devine, assembles a law, her large brood for their first reunion in four years. However, family ties show signs of strain when various secrets come to light, especially concerning Marine Claude, played by Columbus Short, true military status, Quentin, played by Idris Elba, Dave Depp, and teenage baby, Chris Brown's secret plans to become a singer in a film that before Jingle Jangle came was probably my absolute favorite film this Christmas. It featured Regina King in the definitive You Cheating on Me I'm gonna put baby oil on the tile floor. Pull out, dude. This Christmas is special. <laughs> it's a see. You guys are laughing. I rest my case. Uh, anybody watch this? I'm not even taking turns. Anybody got anything to say negative about this Christmas? That's my point. All right, let's keep it moving. Let's get the train moving <laughs> to, to the final film on my list. Oh, boy, and, I will say this. Oh, 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 oh. I think Charles Wait. has something to say. Oh, Before ahead, Charles. you go, I, I almost thought you were going to say Medea's family Christmas. I, I was going to I was going to bomb you out for a second there, but I'm glad you didn't. Go on, move on, move on. All right, man, I'm going to move <laughs> on to the film that inspired this entire list. Nearly 15 years after they were last together as a group, college friends Lance, Mars Chestnut, had the same guys in every Christmas movie, it seems like. Yep. Uh, Candace, Regina <laughs> Hall, Quentin, Terrence Howard, Robin, Sanaa Lathan, Jordan, Nia Long, Merch, Harold Perrineau, and Mia, Monica Calhoun, finally re- reunite over Christmas holidays. Though much has changed in their lives, the friends discover just how easy it is 
for long forgotten rivalries and passionate romances to be reignited in the movie that had me wipe a tear out of my eye. The Best Man Holiday, I think, really, really works as a Christmas movie because we saw these guys build this chemistry in The Best Man, and then you just had them slide back into these roles. I thought Terrence Howard, looking at it again, was, was probably the comic engine that really makes this film move. Uh, and then, you know, of course, with Mars Chestnut, or a.k.a. Chocolate Drop, uh, along with, you know, the ladies in this, that, that new edition thing they did with Can You Stand the Rain, I thought worked really, really well. Yeah. The whole thing, the, the football stuff is a little sketchy to me, but you know, I understand you only got so much budget for this movie. But these last three, Jingle Jangle, This Christmas, and Best Man Holiday, literally to me are like the three movies that if you black, you got to watch these movies. Now, now, I'm not saying if you're not black, you shouldn't watch them, but I'm saying if you black, you can get your black card revoked if you're not watching one of these three movies or if not all three of them at some point during the holiday season, TT, I will start with you because we went with Charles the last time. Um, what are you feeling about the best man holiday? You know what? I agree with you on all counts. You're right. We got to see the relationships established. Terrence Howard, like the whole series <laughs> is, he is the engine that, that is driving that show. Like, like, I got to be honest, like, as a kid growing up, I used to watch Gladys Knight and the Pips when she had the, the they had the variety special back in the day, and I always wanted to be a Pip. Oh, yeah. When I watch these movies, I want to be Terrence Howard. <laughs> he, he, in these films, he is like a Pip. He keeps, he, he's like, he's doing the moves, you want to be him, all that stuff works. And yes, I will agree with you, even to the idea that all three of these, these films at the top here that we've talked about. Yeah, they are. You're right. They're those. They're those films that. Yeah, if you if you're not watching them, you 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 can lose your card. Because in the same way, I don't like Christmas music. And then, as a matter of fact, my wife and I we went to see West Side Story, and they were playing Christmas music in the theater before the movie started, and I was gagging. But I I dare you. I dare anybody to play this Christmas from Donny Hathaway. And not and not see me up and moving and snapping my fingers and getting into it because that's that's my jam. So th these movies are kind of like they're like my Donny Hathaway classic. So I yeah I'll go with you on the on at least two of the three. I'm not so sure about Jingle Jangle for myself, but this Christmas and and the best and best man holiday. <laughs> I'm there. Jingle jangle. Okay. All right. Okay. You, I mean, you know, I like it. I like it, but I'm just saying it doesn't, it doesn't quite move me in the same way. That hold on a second, Charles. TT, you will be visited by three spirits on Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I know. How hasn't it happened yet? What is wrong with you, right? <laughs> Dude, we know enough, we know enough filmmakers by now. We should find some filmmakers, some filmmaker that would be willing to tell the story of Scrooge and put me in the lead. Seriously, I feel like I deserve it. Look, look you see TT at the end. Hey boy, what day is this? Give me a turkey. <laughs> Don't give me some. <laughs> Charles Kirkland, you got a couple of minutes left, man. What are you thinking about uh, the these final three films, including the Best Man Holiday? I'm calling Malcolm D. Lee right now and and pitching T. T. Stern Enzi as Scrooge. <laughs> oh man! But, but wow. yeah, Best Man Holiday. Who? I mean, can you stand the rain? Can you stand the rain? Come on. That, that, <laughs> just fire that movie is fire that movie and is great, i think man. and i think jingle jangle and like you said it is a fantasy version but we we've got all these other two movies that are really grounded in reality we yeah. need that third movie to give a little bit of the the wishfulness and wistfulness of the magic of christmas that that and that's what makes it important to me that's what i think as yeah, far as jingle i can't jangle understand goes. i can't understand that jeronica's jingle didn't move TT. I, I don't get that one at all. Jeronicus, Jeronicus starts off like you, and by the end of the movie, he flying around. He like, hey, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> what? I what? haven't what? had my moment yet. I just hey. haven't had my moment. Uh, okay, so we got to send a buddy to your house, and TT gets me on FaceTime. He like, hey Tim, Merry Christmas. <laughs> 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 all right. 
Uh, we did not, for the second time in, in two weeks, get a chance to uh, go through our movies. We, I'll probably call Charles and we'll set up a second show later on so we can talk about West Side Story and all of the other releases. But this Christmas show I thought was really, really important because we do have to define, which I thought you guys did a good job, because the first six films I was, I was going... But I know I got three good ones. <laughs> so I was like, hey, we're going to give it a shot. Oh, that's cold, man. TT is cold, man. T-T's I thought he was half. saying peace out. Two and a half. Two and a half. He said two and a half. Two and a half. So, so, so uh, uh, despite TT saying it's a half, we would highly recommend if you're black. And if you're not black, I recommend you watch all these movies and then you kind of determine for yourself. And don't don't slack out and watch all the stuff on Netflix. Those are not real Christmas yeah. movies. Those are kind of Christmas movies. They kind of well. Let me take it back. Jingle Jangle is from Jangle. Netflix. That's a real Christmas movie. <laughs> the rest of those, there's a whole lot of movies. Switch that bird. Christmas five. Yeah, stop it. And, and I'm a Christmas guy. Unlike TT, I watch all the Christmas movies on Netflix, and all of them ain't good. And Lifetime, go ahead and say it. Hallmark and Lifetime. Life, no, 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 no. I was just saying, I watched, I watched the gospel uh, Christmas movie over the weekend uh, when I was in L.A. Um, what was that? Uh, the one that had uh, Regina Bell and Kirk, uh, Kirk. I think it was called a Kirk Franklin Christmas. Okay. okay. T.T. didn't. T.T. wasn't moved by that. But I'm saying Best Man Holiday, This Christmas, and Jingle Jangle have got to be on your list. On behalf of all my crew, TT, it is always good to have you here, brother. And, you know, it was good to see you on Monday night. Charles, uh, it would have been good to see you on Monday night. But since you weren't damn, I'll hold it up one more time for you, man. Uh, let you know. TT, you got the box set there? Uh, <laughs> hold up the box set for Charles, man. Uh, <laughs> you don't do that. I don't do that to <laughs> we, 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 as you can tell, we have a lot of fun here. Um, but on behalf of all these guys, we tell you to see something good at the movies. We're giving you several Christmas classics. We're a couple of weeks away. Next week, we'll be back with the worst of, of 2021, which to me is always my favorite show because I get a chance, all the stuff I'm holding back. I will put one hint in there for next week. We're going to do a segment on the worst names of characters. And there's a movie that the guy didn't even get a name, TT. He got the make of a car as a name. Ooh. You remember this one, right? <laughs> Come back next week and we will elaborate on the worst movies of 2021. Worst moments movie. Oh, and by the way, before we get out of here, Justice for Juicy. Uh, you keep it moving. <laughs> we will see you guys on the other side. Episode 483 is a wrap. You guys take care and enjoy your weekend, man. <laughs> Peace. Did he really say that? <laughs> <laughs>